Costco's Kirkland Signature Adjustable Driver has landed on the website today at a price point of $200. The club comes in right hand at 10 and a half degrees with a head cover and wrench, and it looks like there's an adjustable weight in the back there. Shaft that comes with the club is a Project X Evenflow Riptide regular or stiff. As expected, the Evenflow Riptide shaft that's used in this build is not an aftermarket shaft. It's probably a commercial grade mass produced graphite shaft that probably costs, you know, like $5. You see these shaft types a lot. They used to be called made for OEM shafts, so whatever. The adjustable hosel has like a wave comb. It looks like eight positions because that's what I can see from here. I don't think it has a sliding separating collar. So I think the golf shaft is actually gonna have to rotate along with the grip in order to hit these different sleeve position settings. The adapter comb profile does look a little bit similar to the Maltby KE4 adjustable comb. And this one has a slide so that you don't have to rotate the grip. The weight in the back also looks like a pretty standard screw size that you could also get from Maltby. This weight size is also in sub-70s woods and a couple of other manufacturers. The driver price of 200 is way below other companies such as the Tacoma Ignis D1 at 360 and the sub-70 849D at 280. I do want to point out that sub-70 is made by Jim and Jazz Day Golf over in China. Here's the photos of that. And this is also Yes Golf. And we have pretty high confidence that the same manufacturer made Kirkland Signatures irons and it's totally not out of the question that they could have made their driver head for them as well. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that, you know, whatever. That's just how it is in the industry. So the answer is, is would I actually buy the Costco driver at $200? And the answer is, is actually probably not because you have other websites like Callaway Pre-Owned that have used, and generally when it's used and in good condition, it's basically almost new, for almost the same price point, but a wider shaft selection. And most importantly, it's not right-handed only. There's nothing wrong with these drivers. These days, driver performance is pretty maxed out as well as their forgiveness. And the reality of the situation is, is I think maybe they could have had a better price point coming in at around maybe 175 or 150. And I can't find anything on the internet about this Riptide shaft. So it's not a Riptide CV, it's not a Riptide LX, and it's not a Riptide MX. And the other Riptide from True Temper Sports does not have this uh, graphic on it. So that just leads me to believe that this golf shaft is just a pretty cheap industrial slash commercial grade shaft that just has a logo slap on it. And most people probably won't tell the difference, especially if they're not good golfers. We also don't have any reports on the specs of the driver length itself. It could be between 45 to 46 inches. And for those of you who know me, you know how I feel about longer driver lengths. I always recommend you guys cut them down to 45, maybe a little bit shorter because that's just a totally more manageable playing length. So performance wise, yeah, it should keep up with anything on the market. I'm happy that it has both an adjustable hosel and a adjustable weight. I think it's a great price. Um, the only driver I know on the market that's $200 is like PXG and that driver just, you know, whatever. But uh, would I buy it compared to, you know, options like Callaway Pre-Owned that has left-handed options and more shaft selections? Um, the answer is no. But if you're a play 10 times a year or less golfer, sure, knock it, you know, knock yourself out. I do want to say as a closing point, if you're going to go to YouTube and watch reviews on this golf club and they're going to hit the straight in shaft versus some other model, because I'm going to be honest, a lot of people who try and review golf clubs on YouTube do not review them on equal footing. You can thank guys like these two for that, but whatever. So yeah, if you see a review like that when they're not even being treated equal to another driver, take it with a gigantic grain of salt. Once I get my golf robot built, we will put this into a standard shaft with against other commercial grade heads and we'll test it not only against the current market offerings, but we'll actually test to see how much better it is versus drivers from five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever.
such as the R7 Quad, the Nike Sasquatch, you know, Big Bertha, whatever. If you guys like these equipment reviews, be sure to share and follow and let me know what you think or let me know about other potential projects in the future. Like I said, once we get the golf robot up and running, everything's going to get tested. And most importantly, you guys will be able to get all the data sets so you can run your own statistical analysis. Thank you, Taryn. Have a good day.